So here's the scenario. I tell you about a molecule C3H6. Now obviously that's a hydrocarbon molecule because it contains, well, carbon and hydrogen. And then I give you a molecular model kit and I say, okay, here, can you build this molecule? But I only give you three carbons and six hydrogens. Could you do it? And look at that. Except there's one small problem. Remember, all carbons have to have four bonds around them. Hmm. Okay, that's right. You've still got one of those bonds left over. So what are you going to do? That's right. We have a multiple bond. And if we take a look at this formula, we can see that it falls into the general formula of CNH. 2n, where again n refers to the number of carbons that we have. Now there are a certain class of molecules here that we refer to as alkenes. And as we saw with that structure, an alkene possesses a multiple bond. And more specifically with alkenes, it possesses a double bond. And there's a way we go about naming this. And it follows very similar to the way that we name alkanes, and kind of in a way very similar to the way that we name branched alkanes. However, there are some differences when we name alkenes and alkanes. With alkanes, the ending or the suffix is A-N-E. For alkenes, the ending is E-N-E. -E. And much like multiple bonds, if we have a double bond in there, we have to indicate on which carbon this double bond or this multiple bond is present. Now, we always want to have the lowest possible combination of numbers, so we always number the position or location of that multiple bond to be the lowest of the two numbers of the two carbons that it's in between. So if we quickly take a look back at the molecule that we had with our multiple bond, you can see that with those three carbons, we can either start counting from the end with the multiple bond or from the other end. So the molecule's multiple bond either starts on the one carbon or the three. But as I said, we want to keep it on the lowest possible combination of numbers, so we would start counting at the one carbon. So we would call this one propene. However, if we take a look at this, we can notice that regardless of how we orient it, that multiple bond is always going to start on the first carbon, so there's really no such thing as two propene, so we can just call this molecule propene. However, that's a very simplified alkene. So let's take a look at one that's a little more complicated and see if we can go through the naming process for this one. So if we take a look at this structure, we can see that counting from this end, we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in the longest continuous chain that contains that multiple bond, in this case, a double bond. So we would refer to this as a hexene. But because the multiple bond could appear in more than one place, we have to indicate its position. And if we count from this end, we can see that that multiple bond is going to start on the third carbon, so we call it three hexene. And the reason that I counted from this end is because I'm trying to have the lowest possible location numbers for the branches that we can see here and here. And therefore, now we can start putting on those branched names as well, those alkyl groups, into our molecule name. And we refer to this as 2,3-dimethyl, because there are two methyl groups, 3-hexene. So really what we've done is we've combined the idea of the prefix indicating the number of carbons, much like we did with alkanes. We've put position numbers into things that could appear in more than one place, like the side groups from our branch chain. We started applying that to multiple bonds. Now speaking of multiple bonds, and the reason that I refer to them as multiple bonds and not just double bonds, is because we can have a further class of molecules that are called alkynes. And these alkynes have a triple bond between adjacent carbons. So these molecules would be named very similar to how we just named alkenes, except we would have the Y-N-E instead of the E-N-E -E to indicate that we have a triple bond present. Now if we go back to that formula that I referred to earlier, CNH2N, you can have, and you should have, a multiple bond, specifically a double bond within that molecule. But there's another way you could arrange the molecule. We could arrange it like that. And we say that this is a cyclical molecule. In fact, we would refer to this one as cyclopropane. 
Now, even though the molecules themselves, propene and cyclopropane, have the same molecular formula, they have different structures with different properties. In fact, we have a term for this, and that's isomer. Now, there are two different types of isomers. There are structural isomers, like these, and then there are geometric isomers. So let's go back and take a look at one of those model kits to help us out with that. So this molecule here is a 2-butene, and you'll notice the double bond, and that double bond really makes it hard for those side groups to rotate around each other. If we take a look at these two groups, they're across that double bond, so they're a trans-2-butene. Well, in this orientation, they're on the same side, so they're a cis-2-butene. And these side groups stay in these orientations because of the multiple bond that prevents them from rotating back. So while double bonds can restrict the movement of a molecule that are going to give us those cis and trans isomers, it also is possible for the cycloalkanes or ring structures to be present that prevent the movement of those molecules as well. So if we take a look at an example like this, we can see that this cyclobutene ring structure prevents these side groups from rotating back in the other orientation. So hopefully after this you have a better appreciation for why such a wide range of structures can exist when something bonds with carbon. And for our purposes so far, we've only taken a look at a very small class of organic molecules and a simple class of organic molecules called hydrocarbons. They only involve carbon and hydrogen and yet we can get such a wide range and numerous large and differentiated structures. And of course, thanks to our new friend, Hans. Thanks for watching.